What's going on guys? Got another knife review here for you. Today we're going to be looking at the Rude Midtech folder. Uh, this is a folder that I believe was only offered from Blade X, uh, Blade X Store. Uh, the website is bladestore.pro. Um, it's a website owned and put together by uh, my friend Ulyan Chesnikov. Uh, Ulyan is a Russian knife dealer. Um, I think I got to know a number of the knife guys in the community uh, I think he came out to <coughs> excuse me either Blade 2014 or one of the East Coast shows but anyway um, this knife came out a number of months back probably early 2014 if I'm not mistaken can't remember when I actually got it um, but when I saw it I was like man this is a really cool looking eccentric knife uh, very slim profile, almost looks like a switchblade, um, but it's a flipper. Very streamlined in hand, and um, for me, I, I thought it's it's just eccentric enough that I really want to get it. Um, for me, I'm a Christian as well, and so the fact that it had a cross on the clip as well as a cross on the backspacer kind of sold me as well. Um, but you know, this is a, a really interesting folder. On the description on his website, um, these are since sold out, um, but on the website it did say that uh, it was made from a bunch of spare parts from from some other makers, um, and then there was one particular maker, I don't even know who it is, it wasn't identified, but one particular Russian maker then kind of put it all together, CNC'd all the different uh, pieces, and then put this knife together. So from all those spare parts, if I'm not mistaken, uh, only 115 of these were made. And this one is number 29. I don't know if you can see it there. Number 29 of 115. So um, again, very slim profile knife. It also came with this nice uh, nylon case here. And then it came with its own takedown tool, which is this little titanium skull, um, also with a cross on there. So pretty cool um, thing so it kind of fits these screws right here perfectly um, with these teeth here and then you can uh, disassemble the knife if you wanted to um, everything is serial numbered on there uh, even the skull um, on this knife it has a milled a kind of curved milled pocket clip right there you see how it's recessed inside so it has good flex on it um, good retention um, these proprietary screws, again, obviously, because you need that skull tool, um, the skull spanner tool to uh, adjust anything on here. And then on the f uh, display side or presentation side of the knife, um, it's got these milled, uh, not they're not milled all the way through, but I mean, for me, it kind of looks like bubbles. Um, so it was, it was something that never grew on me. So yeah, it looks like little water bubbles that are that are floating up. So not quite mayo holes. Uh, if they were mayo holes, I, I would have preferred this knife a little bit more. But um, yeah, I kind of thought that these little milling jobs were a little bit cheesy. Um, but that's just my personal preference. The blade itself is S35 uh, VN steel, as you can see right there on the flipper tab. Um, you got the little marking of Rude. Um, and then you have these big, deep folders uh, on the blade here. Otherwise, it's pretty much a full flat grind. You can see the grind lines on this blade, so it's really, really um, beautiful grinds on here. The long blade, it's three and three quarters uh, inch as well, and then overall length comes out to be about eight and three quarters inch. So you get a lot of blade in um, in the actual frame sitting up there. So it almost goes quite almost to the tip. Uh, the backspacer as well is unique. It's one piece of titanium um, with this cut out here for a lanyard uh, pin that sits inside. Uh, I think it's inset within the frame. On the back here you have kind of this file work. Um, not really, it doesn't really serve as jimping on the back. Um, then there's no jimping on the top side of the handle. Um, so a little bit of a uh, little bit of jimping on the flipper. I don't know if you can see these things but right here and then here. So on the choil so there is somewhat of a hilt or guard as you're holding it. Uh, no jimping on the blade either, so it's pretty smooth. But with this little hilt for your index finger right here, um, it's going to hold pretty well. 
um, but you can't hold it up here as it's sharpened all the way to the edge right there. So <clears throat> any kind of fine precision work is going to be a little bit hard to do. Um, inside it also has a steel lock bar insert. Um, hopefully you can see that right there. And then um, there is a little tab on the insert so that it prevents over travel on the frame lock as well. Um, overall, it's got you know it also has ball bearings on the inside, um, and then it's got like a nice little brass or bronze phosphor kind of collar. Um, this little pin right here is for uh, the pocket clip if you want to adjust it for tip down carry. So that's a pretty cool thing. When I did get this knife, that was the first thing I switched over from tip down to tip up carry. Um, ball bearings inside, uh, it's kind of like GTC uh, bearings, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it makes for a smooth flipper, but it's uh, you have to be really deliberate with this flipper. So the one thing that's unique about this Rude is um, how small, how tiny that flipper is. Um, you know, you get something as, you know, like a Shirogorov, you know, this is already considered a small flipper, and this is as big of a flipper as you need to flip something, you know, as smooth as a Shirogorov. Um, for the Norseman, it's the same thing. You know, it's got a tiny little flipper with a little bit of jimping, so you can light switch it or you can button press it. Um, either way, it's going to flip out extremely fast. But for the Rude, um, you almost have to like light switch and button push it at the same time because it's so. It's recessed almost inside that, that hilt of the handle, if you will. Um, so you have to deliberately kind of load up and then pull back. So if you light switch it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fly out. If you button press it, um, it's going to fly out as well. But if you don't get good purchase on that flipper, um, then it'll kind of just, yeah. So I mean, I, I'm doing it weekly just so you can see it there. Um, but even there, you know, you can see it's it's going against its own weight and it's still able to flip all the way out if you really want it to. So overall a really smooth flipper um, in general. So again because I don't know you know much about I don't even know the name of the maker of this knife. It just said you know on the website um, designed by our friend spare parts was produced by various CNC makers. So I don't even know what that means you know other than it, what it sounds like is just there's all the spare titanium, there's all the spare steel, uh, S35, obviously all these you know, Russian makers, whether it's Konigin, whether it's Shirogorov, whether it's a um, bunch of other you know, makers have all been using S35 and all these Russian mid-techs from custom, ni uh, custom knife factory and whatnot. And so all these different extra parts, you know, I'm assuming there's always all these frames that are sitting around and so you know, given that it's so slim and streamlined, um, you know, this is something that maybe can fit within the leftover titanium. And so I think it's pretty ingenious. It's like, you know, Russia's going green, you know, with their knife makers or whatever. Um, rather than dumping all this, you know, titanium and wasting it all, you know, being able to come out with a new knife such as this, you know, which looks, again, it's really eccentric, but it's really cool. You know, it's, it's really ergonomic in hand. It's very thin. Um, again, you know, like uh, it reminds me of like the feeling of my Ultratech. You know how thin it was in hand. How you know this has a little bit more curve, so it kind of feels a little bit better in the hand. It's not as boxy. Um, so it's really cool. Anyway, um, one thing also that's that's pretty unique about um, the Rude is how thick this blade stock is. Um, this blade stock, I believe, is 190 thou, almost 200 um, thou thick. You know, so if you compare it next to the Sabenza, it absolutely, I mean, this is a folding pry bar. Um, here against the Birch Midtech, also much thicker. So uh, when I compared it, you know, the knife that came closest to it was actually my Hinder XM24. So this one, uh, I think the hinder is 185 thou, if I'm not mistaken. And so it's hard to see a little bit because of the reflection from the light. Um, and this whole spine is rounded as well. So just really, really nice attention to detail and whatnot on this knife. So really, really thick uh, piece of blade stock of S35VN. 
says that it's um, heat treated to 61 HRC as well. So you get to, um, it should be, you know, hold its edge pretty well. Um, so anyway, uh, not much else to say about this knife. Uh, a very cool and eccentric knife. Just wanted to get this review out there for, um, because I am actually training this knife um, for another one. So I'm looking forward to receiving the other knife soon. So I'm going to box this one up and then ship it out. But just wanted to give you guys a little taste of this knife. Um, you can check out some other, there's only a handful of other reviews, not really reviews, but um, some people kind of showed it off. Ulyan himself made a video of it, I believe, where he was doing some prying, um, stabbing, you know, some wood and stuff like that, and then prying with it. So um, seems like a pretty hefty folder. Yeah, with this blade stock, um, you're not going to have any issue with, with prying for the most part. But anyway, let me know what you guys think on the comments down below about the Rude MidTech folder. Thanks again for watching, as always, and you guys take care. I'll see you next time. Bye.